Hey you guys. Okay, we are back. This is our first official um, like real topic. So I introduced the fact that I'm going to start this live series on Mondays and Thursday. And here we are on Thursday. I am Tabitha Gidry Turner. I am a mental health therapist and um, I have a license in Florida and I have a license in Louisiana. I have a private practice. I have a day job. I am a mom. I am a wife and a friend, a family member, uh, and a helper. I mean, it, it is what I enjoy to do. So doing my part, I really feel like I want to give back. I explained that on my introduction video that I did a few days ago, and I'm super excited to be here live with you guys. Today, um, I want to talk about how life has a way of catching up with us. So it does. I think we all know that. And what I really mean by that is, is I want to talk about self-care. The more I thought about what I was going to talk about each time we meet, and, and yes, I, I want to get into depression, I want to get into anxiety, PTSD, um, child anxiety, bullying, all these topics are things I'm going to touch on as we move through this series, and I'm super excited about having these discussions with everybody, but today I want to talk about self-care because at the end of the day, we've got to take care of ourself. So. In taking care of ourself, what is self-care? I think everybody just thinks, oh, okay, yeah, I take care of myself, I eat, I sleep. But really, like, think about what self-care is. Are you taking care of yourself? The obvious things of, are you getting enough sleep at night? Most of us aren't. I mean, sometimes I average like five hours of sleep just because sometimes I Netflix binge, I will not lie. Um, and I feel like, oh, you owe it to yourself. Stay up till midnight, just one more episode. Yeah, I'm that person, I will admit it, but I do pay for it because I wake up at 5 a.m. to work. And so that's, that's tough. It's one of those things where you're gonna have to shut the TV off. I have a really bad habit of doing that or not doing it. And so uh, that's part of self-care. Um, grooming, okay, yeah, we all take showers, right? getting your hair done, getting your nails done. We don't all have the finances to do that. I mean, sometimes I might have the finances, but I just don't necessarily wanna pay for it. Painting your own nails, shaving your legs. I know it seems super basic, but small things like this go a long way at building your self-esteem. And building your self-esteem is incredibly important to your day-to-day, -day, your self-care. So those are things for ladies. So maybe guys wanna go and get an edge or get their beard trimmed or, I mean, I'm not a dude, so I don't know what makes dudes feel good, so to speak, but I am a human and I think at the end of the day, taking care of ourselves needs to be top priority. If we are not taking care of ourselves, we are gonna be poor parents, we are gonna be poor spouses, poor partners, poor employees, um, and we all lose sight of this. Nobody is perfect, nobody's got it all figured out. I, I can sit here and tell you that we need to take care of ourselves so we're blue in the face. Uh, I have to remind myself of it every single day. So, some of the things that I'm gonna tell you is, I know reading is not for everybody, but I've started to read personal development. I, I try to read a couple of different things, but one of them I do read is personal development. This is the book that I'm reading right now. And um, Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. This is a great read. I've also, I'm trying to look at my bookshelf right now. There's another one. I'll, I'll bring it next time and, and put it on the uh, camera. I think it's super important and sometimes we need somebody to remind us to get motivated, to not give up on what our original goal was or to, to not forget about ourselves. So maybe reading's not your thing, but you still wanna get that, that motivation, that energy in. You can listen to podcasts, those are available. You can listen to audible books. In fact, this one is an audible book. So if you don't have time to read and you have a long commute, and rather than listening to like the radio where they play the same songs over and over again, listen to a book, enrich yourself. So that's one way. 
but I know books are not for everybody and that's okay and maybe you know getting your nails done or or you know paint or getting your hair done or whatever that's not so much for you either just figure out what makes you just you like not what makes your husband happy or your wife or your kids like what makes you super happy so fitness is something that makes me incredibly happy and sometimes I don't necessarily want to do it but I do want that feeling when it's over and staying healthy and on track with my eating goes a really long way it helps my skin it helps my energy level uh, it just it honestly it helps my brain function at a better level so that's something I do for myself every day my kids are home for the summer my day job I work from my house so they're here although they're not under my foot they're here and I definitely want them to get exercise and be outside you know they get that with school when they're in school and they have PE and things of that nature so I, t I started running and my husband would laugh because I am not a runner. I am an inside worker, outer, <laughs> I do videotapes and, and boxing and just things like that. But I felt like I needed to get outdoors with the kids and I have grown to love it. You guys, y'all would make fun of how slow I run. It's more of like a fast walker, light jog. Cause I'm definitely not walking. But regardless, I, I just started. And I said, okay, my goal is a mile, right? I'm not gonna keel over running a mile outside at noon in South Louisiana when it's like 95 degrees, but I didn't. And I've done it every day for two months. And my kids get out and they ride their bikes. Um, my oldest son thought, oh, I'm gonna run with you, mommy. And uh, yeah, he made it about 10 steps and he's like, can I go get my bike? Absolutely. So pushing yourself to be uncomfortable to get yourself to the place where you're working out or doing something for yourself to make yourself feel better. And I'm gonna tell you, if you're not taking care of yourself, like I said before, you're gonna drown in other things. Work is always going to have bad moments, as all things, all seasons of life have those down moments. I have manic Mondays. I have to say right now at work, Mondays, have not slowed down they're wicked they're wicked there's no other way to, to go about it and then the kids are here and then I'm tired and then I wish it was already the weekend and it's not it's not even close <laughs> and then I'm like oh we got karate and and you got it the second you get off work I'm in the in the parent mode and and then we get home and it's into get ready for the next day mode and it I feel like I missed a hundred steps in between and what else oh laundry sometimes you forget about you so remember like this sounds so silly too but sometimes i won't even want to wash my face sometimes i don't even want to brush my teeth i know it sounds gross and i always do it i swear to god i always do it but sometimes i am that tired where i don't want to do it but i always feel good once i've done it and i relax and that's super important so at the end of the day like i was saying taking care of yourself is gonna go a long way so if you have something else going on in your life that's causing you to have depression or anxiety or anything, you got to start somewhere. So figure out what it is that makes you happy, that makes you smile, that makes you relax. I, I took a course this summer, which I really, really enjoyed. And we did some uh, visualization and some meditation. And every time I say meditation, I'm like, eh. but it's really amazing. I actually did it on a child not too long ago in a, in a session. And I think she was, she, she was young. I mean, she was like a tween, a word that didn't exist when I was coming up, but she was like a tween and she was real resistant, but she went with it. I asked her to trust me. And you guys, <laughs> when we were done, she was like, wow that was so cool and it does I mean it has it has that way of just relaxing but the problem is is you got to get out of here and allow yourself to relax so whether you have anxiety problems or you're having a problem just like coming down for the day or you're feeling like super depressed you you may not have depression every day but people get bummed. I mean, we all do. I'm not going to ever tell you that I don't because I have, life is a roller coaster. Life is going to happen. You are 
going to have bills pile up. You are going to have house problems or you're trying to save to buy a house of your own or you're renting and your landlord won't fix things or it's hot and your AC broke. That's light and that's always going to happen. There is nobody and I guarantee you nobody on this earth that has it all figured out. There's nobody that their life is perfect. And I think the the best way to look at that is I think we all look at money. Oh, that could fix everything, right? Because if I have money, then I can go on these exotic vacations to Bora Bora. I mean, that is definitely a goal for me. And we can buy the big houses and the fancy cars in like 10 different cars. And I don't have to work so hard. That's just not the case. Think about all the people in 2018 alone that have from the outside everything, right? They're beautiful, they have tons of money, everybody loves them, they have lots of success, and they're killing themselves. That's not happiness. It's just not. There was a point where they lost their self-care. They lost themselves. They didn't love themselves enough. You gotta love yourself. I work on loving myself more and more every day. I try to enrich myself, I try to be a better parent, a better wife, and I fail and fall flat on my face sometimes. Even when I tell myself not to, I still do it. But the difference is, is when you fail, what you're gonna do with the failure. So are you gonna get up? Are you gonna say, okay, what's going on with me right now? Maybe I need to take a self time out. Maybe I need to walk away. Maybe I need to take a deep breath. Also, self-care is absolutely no one's priority except your own. It is not your spouse or your partners or your friends or your parents. It's nobody's responsibility but your own. So are you going to stand up? Or are you going to say, I'm going to do this? You do not need permission to take care of yourself. You need to communicate if you need to like step away. Sure, absolutely, because life is about communication. So I would tell my spouse, hey, I'm gonna start doing this. Let's talk about the schedule. I would need 15 minutes here, 30 minutes here, and that's what I need to do for me. So something I felt like I was really driven to do for myself was exercising, but I do that when nobody's at the house. So it really does not cause any kind of conflict with my husband's schedule, my kid's schedule, or anything. Sometimes life happens and I don't get to work out. So I either work out what I consider to be their time with me or I don't work out at all. Or I'll make up the day on the weekend. But it's, I mean, life's a negotiation. You have to be flexible. You can't be super rigid. And believing that is a lot coming from me because I'm like wicked organized. I like things a certain way. It's something I'm working on. It's something I need. One of the things my husband and I realized is we weren't doing anything for ourselves, like personally. So my husband really likes to play basketball. He's really good at it. It makes him feel good. It's good exercise. So two nights a week, he, he gets to do that. And then two nights a week, I get to do something I want. So something I felt super driven was to open up a private practice. So my two nights a week, I run my private practice. And that's for me because that's something I wanted to do and it's in my family time. So him and I negotiate it, we communicate it, and we're both very happy with it. Friday nights are family nights. We do game night, we do movies, something with the kids. And weekends are for family unless, you know, something else happens. But that's what, that's what our, always our goals are. You have to be flexible. But we had to communicate that. We didn't have that forever. I mean, I don't know. I think we've had this set up maybe four or five months. Maybe it's been like six months. And it works most of the time, sometimes it doesn't. Like last night we had a birthday party, and so we went to it. And so the kids missed karate, and, and daddy missed basketball, and I mean, that happens. But it was for a great cause, and we had a great time, and lots of laughs and hugs from people that we love, and that enrich us. That's another thing. I find that I miss uh, adult time and what I mean by that is like, I went over to one of my cousin's house the other day and our kids were acting like wild Comanches and we were sitting there having some wine and just talking like grownups. And I miss that and I loved it. Our husbands were talking, we were talking 
and that's just something we have to get better at too. So again, this is all part of self-care. Take care of yourself. Therefore, you're gonna have more energy for the people that you love and that are in your life. More uh, happiness, fulfillment. Because at the end of the day, if you're not taking care here, everything else is just gonna poof, and it really will. You are the foundation of yourself. Your care, how you're taking care of yourself. So that's the message today, guys. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, drop them in. If you want me to talk about anything in the future, or if you wanna know more specifics about uh, maybe ideas for self-care or motivation or books that I've read uh, that I found super motivating, just let me know. All right, you guys have a great night, and I'll see you guys on Monday.